Daring hope. Hope is first of all a gift, but this gift must be welcome, cared for, embraced, and put into action. This is our great task, something that requires great daring and that calls us to be signs, witnesses and prophets of hope, actors and actresses of hope. It is about being actors who rehearse tirelessly in this theater that is our world. And rehearsals require repetition, constancy, work, but they also make it possible to try out new things, to risk crazy things that have never been tried before. Rehearsals invite us to go to the limit to see if we are capable. They invite us to invent new paths, new postures. Rehearsal time makes us more capable of taking risks, of experimenting with new things, realities that may even seem crazy. This is a hope that cries out for audacity, for risk, for creativity. Something like this is what lies behind this expression, rehearsing hope. It is a call to become witnesses of hope, rehearsing it, taking care of it, caressing the new, the embryonic with tenderness and desire for more. In a world like so wounded by death, disease, quarantines, and the economic and social disaster that is going to lock millions of men and women below the poverty line, we have the duty to take responsibility for their hopes, but also to witness that there is something else, that there is another horizon, another scenario that, come what may, endures, and remains before our eyes if we are able to raise our heads. This is our task, a task that calls for boldness, audacity, madness, irrationality, and the illogical, the illogicality of love, the illogicality of a small hope. Our call at this time is to be signs of hope, not only with reasons and supporting arguments. The great need and our great opportunity lie in demonstrating with our lives that we are hopeful women, even when apparently we do not have many reasons for it. The greater our poverty and littleness, the greater our opportunity to witness, really, where our hope lies, we will be more credible. And secondly, giving witness that, basically, what is important is not what I hope for or in whom I hope, but that there is someone, God, who hopes in us and to hope in someone is to give them credit, to wait for everything from them, to trust in them. It would be about being witnesses of this, in our way of relating to others. Do we transmit to others when we are? With them family, friends, colleagues, the people we help, that we expect something from them, that they have something to offer us as well, something to give to the world, that we value them for who they are, and for thy reason we expect something positive from them. Because this brings out the best in everyone. And it is able to give strength where there is none. Those who love and hope for the future of Christ cannot be satisfied with reality as it is today. The world becomes unbearable for those who hope for the new heavens and the new earth wherein dwellers righteousness. Hope does not reassure, it disturbs, it introduces contradiction with reality. It generates protest, it awakens us from the apathy and indifference of many in contemporary society. It unsettles us. When one hopes for and loves liberation, the chains begin to ache. Here are some questions that may help you reflect and then share in community. Remember to take notes and write down what you want to communicate. Explore what calls you feel within that are an invitation to wake up and activate this dimension of hope in you. Without too many filters, nor too much carefulness, let dreams emerge, even if they seem crazy. Which one would I like to share? Who would I like to involve? We share in community by means of the listening circle. It serves me and does not serve me. Hope so sweet. So polished, so sad, the promise so slight, is of no use to me. Hope so meek is of no use to me. Rage so submissive, so weak, so humble, rage so prudent, is of no use to me. It does not serve me, so much rage so wise. The cry so precise, if time permits, the scream so neat, 
is of no use to me. It's not so much good to me. So much thunder, courage so docile, bravery so insipid, fearlessness so slow, is of no use to me. It's no good to me, boldness that is so cold. Mario Benedetti, translated from Spanish, 